This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. Get the best deal in streaming, both CuriosityStream and Nebula Bundle together, for less than $15 a year at CuriosityStream.com slash H-A-I. Are you constantly tired in the morning? When your alarm goes off, do you smash it with a hammer? Has your morning alarm clock smashing routine gotten to be such a problem that your wife is threatening to leave you? Are you spiraling into poverty due to the cost of replacing all the destroyed alarm clocks? Well, I have some good news. Your morning struggles might not be your fault. Maybe you don't have anger management issues. Maybe you're just on the wrong side of a time zone. You see, much like typewriters and the concept of regular bathing, time zones didn't exist until the late 1800s. Back in the day, in a more honest time, towns oriented their clocks based on the sun. When the sun reached its highest point in the sky, solar noon as the cool kids called it, towns set their clocks to noon o'clock. But of course, the sun can't be everywhere at once. That's a power reserved only for Nebula ads and HEI videos, so every town had a slightly different time. This didn't matter much back when people traveled by wagon and communicated via swoopy cursive on dead tree, but over time, as folks traded in horses for trains and sails for steam power, the fact that every town had its own time made it close to impossible to schedule transportation, organize meetups, and conduct business across distance. And so, some rich white businessmen decided to do what rich white businessmen do best, increase their profits by unilaterally changing how the rest of the world lived. This was the result. Time zones. While this map may look like it was drawn by a 12-year-old drunk on chocolate syrup, it actually represents a carefully calibrated compromise between building our days around solar noon and a standardized universal time. No longer were towns separated by 12 minutes, or 69 minutes, or 420 minutes, but by clean, family-friendly hour increments, which greatly relieved the headaches of countless mustachioed boiler hat-wearing businessmen who could now invest all their newly organized time in union busting and accumulating unprecedented wealth. But while the time zone system has served us honorably for a century and a half, recently some pesky scientists have used a bunch of dumb, fake sounding stuff called facts and data and evidence to show that time zones are creating some real health issues. Humans, you see, have been around a lot longer than clocks, and through some Darwinian process of some sort, humans came up with their own biological clock. Get up with the sun, hunt the mammoths and giant sloths by day, draw some sweet battle scenes on cave walls at dusk, then go to bed at dark. And though we don't live like that anymore because our selfish ancestors came up with extravagant inventions like agriculture and electricity and not dying of dysentery, we're still programmed to get up with the sun and go to bed when it's dark. With time zones though, some of us are getting up with the sun while others are getting up while it's still dark. Take, for example, two towns in the central time zone, Pensacola, Florida on the time zone's eastern edge, and Lubbock, Texas on its western edge. Now, although these towns are similar in the fact that they both have silly names and we should feel bad for the people who live there, there's one key differentiating factor. In Pensacola, the sun rises a whole hour before it does in Lubbock. That means, if you have to wake up at 6.30 a.m. in Pensacola, the sun will be up, but if you wake up at 6.30 a.m. in Lubbock, you're starting off the day in the dark with sunrise not coming for another hour. That really sucks for the people in Lubbock, because having to wake up in the dark is much harder on your inner caveman clock than waking up with the sun. Plus, it's kind of a no-win scenario because if you live in Lubbock, Texas, even once the sun finally does come up, you'll still be living in Lubbock, Texas. The thing is, for those who live on the western edge of these overly wide time zones, a later sunrise means more reliance on artificial light, more artificial light means more disruptions to one's circadian rhythm, which is fancy science talk for your internal caveman clock, and more disruptions leads to a number of bad things, varying from stress to higher rates of disease and cancer. Getting out of rhythm with your caveman clock also leads to something scientists call social jet lag, which surprisingly is not when you stay up until 4am doom scrolling Twitter, but is actually a term for an out of rhythm sleep schedule that leaves one feeling constantly tired, irritable, and unable to concentrate. All in all then, without the sun there to gently kiss your cheek as you wake up, all you sorry time zone leftists are more likely to be tired, get grumpy, and even develop objectively not funny health problems, which is why the next time you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, you should consider that it might be because you were on the wrong side of a time zone. If you live on the left side of a time zone and are sad about the fact that you might die, soothe your sorrow through the powers of capitalism. So, you know how streaming services are expensive? They cost 8 or 10 or $12 a month? Well, CuriosityStream is the opposite of expensive. Some might call it unexpensive? That's because, with the current sale pricing, it costs less than $15 a year. 
That's about the cost of a movie ticket, but with this, you don't have to sneak candy by a sad teenager because you can watch CuriosityStream and Nebula on your TV, tablet, phone, or computer. Of course, CuriosityStream is the place to go if you're looking for documentaries by big names like Jane Goodall and Chris Hadfield, like this very highly rated one about the Winnebago salesman, who became the subject of one of the internet's earliest viral videos, while Nebula is where to go if you're looking for bigger budget stuff by these smaller names, like me. I've got two Nebula originals coming out this month, and the only way to see them is with a subscription. With the current sale pricing, now is the time to sign up, so make sure to do so over at curiositystream.com/hai, and you'll be supporting the channel while you're at it.